Is this all live? This is going to be live. We fucked up the all cold right. open. Hello, Internet. Hey, in- hey Internet. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> What's ah. up, Internet? Besides my sweet gas station shirt that I bought like a month ago when I was in Alberta. Has it been? This is the first time we're reunited for an episode in many weeks, I feel like. Uh, oh, like six. Because yeah. your girlfriend or your what girlfriend, your wife did the last one. And before that, that was, was two weeks like, ago. You had my girlfriend on. Don't tell my wife. She might get <laughs> upset. Uh, yeah, that would make things awkward. Super awkward. Yeah. And then I was supposed to record some episodes while you were gone. And I just didn't That's do fine. that. That's fine. How was Alberta? Besides this shirt. Wait, 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 All right. wait, 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 wait. Welcome to Irish Factory, the podcast where we look at the things that made people mad online and explain where they're dumb for caring. I'm your co-host, Garrick Bowler. I'm your other co-host, Dale DeRuder. Dale, how was Alberta? It was, well, it was good. I found this shirt. I got to see my mom and my grandma. I haven't seen my grandma in like over a year because COVID and shit. And then I basically went for a whole week and did a different family member every day. So it was pretty cool. Slept in like, sorry. Can you phrase that? I did a different family member every day. Can you? Okay, I had I sex did, with a different family visit, member. Every day. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> there thanks you go. For that cleared up. That. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I slept in six <laughs> different beds in six di- six days. Damn. And uh, let me tell you, when you're 42. You can't bounce back from different beds as fast as you used to. You cannot. I was also sleeping yeah. in different beds with your various family members for ah. uh, for 10 days. And uh, yeah, getting getting back home uh, was a special tasty treat. Yeah, it was like, do I have COVID or long COVID symptoms or is it just sleeping in other people's <laughs> beds? I don't know. Am I just <laughs> old as fuck? Yeah. It's the latter. So it's uh, the best thing is it's been like six weeks and it's been two weeks since our last podcast. And it's been so long, like and so much shit has happened in this last two weeks. I forgot like so much of it. Has it? I've like I'll- tuned out of the news cycle completely. Yeah, me uh, too a bit. And it's just fucking glorious. Like I will like. Yeah. I'll log on to Twitter once every couple days and I'll just see like people yelling about COVID numbers or uh, it got pretty grim here in BC for a while. Uh, Forest fires obviously are still a problem, but like you go online to see people's reaction to these things. And it's just like people screaming about climate change or people (laughs) screaming about COVID numbers or people screaming about fucking whatever else. And I'm just like, you know, I don't, I don't miss this. Yeah. I mean, it's been so long. It's like, are, are people going to just finally change their mind about co- climate change now? I mean, no. I mean, people who deny it are just going to keep doing that because they have a vested interest in like not admitting climate change is real. And mm-hmm. like anything can be explained away by like, oh, this is just a natural climate cycle. If you go back millennia, you know, the earth burned uh, for entire years once every mm-hmm. 400 years and maybe maybe that's just what this is and people's yeah, attention but, span is about 10 seconds long so no one's gonna look back and say did you years. know like fourteen thousand years ago the earth was warmer than it is now and there was a ice age and <laughs> i i want okay this is purely selfish and this is the worst attitude ever but i kind of want global warming just to see if atlantis is under the polar ice cap I want to I want to find out like if all that sure. if all that reason. ice melts and Atlantis is under there, then it was kind of worth it. Don't you think we just go like hobnob, go do anthropology on or archaeology on all of their technology Maybe still living down there? Maybe they're they're just frozen like they're in like uh, it's like cryogenics and they're in like a frog animation. And all of a sudden the city of Atlantis will thaw and the people, the technologically advanced Atlantean people will come to save us from ourselves. So maybe, maybe melting the polar ice caps could have a net positive effect. 
dude, maybe since Atlanteans are lizard people, they're in like hibernation, like a frozen frog. And it'll be like, we keep thinking that aliens are going to come from outer space, but it'll be like that movie, which this is a huge spoiler for that movie, uh, War of Tomorrow, that the aliens came from in from under the ice. Sorry for everyone who hasn't watched that movie. It I just came watched. out. It's very good. You should watch it. It's uh, did time we do travel. The, did we do the spoiler tags before you said that? Before you dropped that ball? I said, this is a spoiler and everybody will okay. hate me. Does that right. count? Yeah, that counts. That's fair. Well, it's like it's kind of hard because I said what the spoiler was before I said what movie it was from. So you know, I think we only have one or two friends who care about spoilers. It's like at this age, it's like I kind of like spoilers because you're like, oh, that sounds good. I'll watch that movie because it's like if you don't know a movie's going to be good, you're like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to watch this. Or you're like. Well, that sums up the entire movie. And now I don't need to waste two hours of my life watching something. I just had to listen to Dale say a single sentence. Uh, and we're because uh, we're recording already. What's going on? Sorry, what's I forgot. To say, I got my assistant to, to bring up. No, I got Andrea to bring out the fan because I forgot to set it up. And then I was sitting here and then, like I said, two words and I was already sweating. And I was like, that's going to be a problem. Can you hear that in my mic? Okay. I don't think so. How do I get? Okay. Can you come fan me? Thank you. What? We'll see if she does it. No, that's good. Dope. (laughs) This is, this is awesome. Like, um, it's funny because I've always, like I started doing my side podcast and whenever stuff like this happens, I have to edit it out because it's just like silence. But with you here, I you can just silence. keep talking. Yeah. We it's don't like, do, we don't do editing. You might be as a listener of this podcast, you might be surprised to know we don't edit a goddamn thing. <laughs> and uh, the, that's the, half the reason why we still do this live on Facebook is a live stream is so that there's no point to edit it because it'll be like, well, it's in the live stream. Yeah. We want to keep it true. And I think we've only ever edited the podcast once or twice. When I said, when I can't remember what it was about. It was something problematic. Yeah. It was, it was something s- that was too problematic for this podcast, which is, which says, Hey, a lot. We've only been pulled down off YouTube once. True. And that was a feather in my cap. No, that episode's never going back on YouTube. All right. Well, apparently, uh, don't talk about uh, COVID stuff. We'll release it in uh, 10 years as the lost episode when people are less sensitive about COVID (laughs) stuff. (laughs) When people look back and be like, oh, yeah, maybe we should allow should have allowed people to talk about COVID openly instead of just pulling everything off that doesn't follow lockstep with the accepted narrative. Uh, I asked my wife to bring me a fan and she is pooping. So that's, uh, that's where <laughs> I'm married at. life. Married life. Baby. Dude, if I <laughs> said Andrew was pooping on this podcast, she would murder me. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's <laughs> judging from the text messages I'm now getting. That's, that <laughs> She's watching us in well. the bathroom. I don't know how I feel about that. That's the best place to watch us. I guess. <laughs> you get shit in, shit out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, how was your trip? We talked about my trip to Alberta. How was, how do you pronounce it? Puerto Rico? Puerto Rico. Is there like, uh, like specific way you're supposed to say it? Or you just say like Puerto Rico? Well, yeah, as a white person, you should say Puerto. So I went to uh, South Carolina, North Carolina and Puerto Rico. I uh, was also supposed to do Baltimore, but got royally fucked by Air Canada. Uh, they saved you from like- getting shot. They sure. OK, we could say that. Um, but uh, yeah, it was it was nice to get back on the, the road and do some traveling. And uh, Puerto Rico is dope. Would highly recommend going there. Great culture. Great people. Uh, South tax Carolina. Haven. What's up? Isn't it a tax haven where you go there? and You don't have to pay income tax. No, I think on your that, business. It's, it's essentially like a U.S. colony. Um, yeah. So I don't know if like I'm pretty sure they're just subject to normal U.S tax laws well i think there's something about you don't have to pay it you pay way less taxes or something like there's businesses like andrew 
I don't know. I can't remember his name. Some guy went down there. I heard him on some podcast is stoling the virtues of setting up your business in Puerto Rico. You're thinking, uh, you're thinking that other place that was the Costa tax, Rica. The um, fuck. What's the other one? Tax Haven countries. Bahamas. The Cayman Islands of mm. the United States ranks very high. The world's biggest private tax havens in 2021. You ready for this? Yeah. Number one, Cayman Islands. Okay. What what is the one we were thinking of? Costa Rica? No, it's not Costa Rica. So Cayman Islands, United States, Switzerland. Wait, the United States is number two for tax havens. Wait, that doesn't is that Puerto Rico? It could be. It could be. Uh, I also know that's uh what is it? Delaware, I think a lot of businesses Delaware. Inc- incorporate in Delaware um, yeah. because it offers uh, very favorable tax. Oh, laws. yeah. And then some places like this comes up with NHL talks because uh, if you play Panama, Panama is the one, the Panama Papers. Oh, yeah. Right. So if you play NHL, if you play a professional hockey in some states, you don't have to pay income tax off your giant sum of money. So it actually turns out that if you, I think if you play for Christ, I think it's Arizona, the money you make actually ends up being more than it would be any in some other States. I think Florida is the same, but then you have to live in Arizona. Speaking of uh, Glendale, the city of Glendale Glendale! has informed the Arizona coyotes that they will, uh, Hockey in Arizona is such a money losing venture that the arena ownership group has informed the Coyotes that they would rather use the arena to do anything other than host hockey. Yeah. Uh, so the Arizona Coyotes are going to be homeless unless they relocate to another city. Uh, uh, that's after this next coming season. Yeah. yeah. Uh, could we see Quebec Nordiques? Could we? Or they should go back to. Winnipeg, so we can have two teams called the Winnipeg Jets, because that's where the Winnipeg Jets went, didn't they? To Arizona? No, they went to uh, who became Arizona? Atlanta, Atlanta. Winnipeg Jets became the Atlanta Thrashers. Yeah, I think Arizona was just like a brand no, new expansion team. The they? Thrashers became the Winnipeg Jets. Are we sure about that? Yeah. Hard right away. Let me go. Oh my God. Doing some Google <laughs> fact checking. What We're so good at team this. Move to Phoenix. Let's go. Oh, you know, you're absolutely correct. It was the Jets moved to Phoenix on July Dale 1st, 1996. has a giant brain. Oh, speaking of which, they could go play in the arena that the Phoenix Sun play in, which was the first arena they played in in 96, the Arizona Coyotes. Like, it's not it's not that the team is leaving Arizona, the Arizona state yet. They just can't play in the arena they're currently playing in. So I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, but I can't see another arena being like, oh, we, too, would like to hemorrhage money. Let's let's bring the fucking mm-hmm. let's host this hockey team in fucking Arizona. Um, Dale, your uh, your girlfriend. Oh, and my wife. Yeah, I heard that Glendale is kicking out the coyotes so that they can have super dog competition. Super dogs. It's specifically Tater Tot, the best super dog, which we saw yesterday at the opening of the PE, which was, I don't know, should we talk about? I don't know. Oh, we watched Super nice Dog yesterday. We went we went to the PE, which for you non-locals, that's the Pacific National Exhibition. That's the mm-hmm. like three week fair basically like a state fair for british columbia uh and it runs here and it was really fucking night the whole thing was canceled last year due to covid uh Mm -hmm. this year they were like you know we're we're gonna do it with like limited admission uh and we went and i don't think there was any difference in the number of people like maybe there were a few hundred less people yeah Um, the only thing different was the super dogs and stuff was outside instead of inside and the marketplace was smaller. Like they basically took where they have the animals and they used one of those barns for the marketplace instead of having the marketplace wherever it usually is. So I guess they can't. So it's like they let less people in, 
but they put them in a smaller space. So it kind of counter contra, contradicted itself. <laughs> um, yeah. So I guess COVID's done now that we can have the P and E and everything like you're, they, they're, they're still doing the, uh, masks recommended instead of masks are mandatory type of thing. I think most places are doing that now. There are like the odd privately owned business is still like, um, and I saw it in the States as well. And in Puerto Rico, yeah. there were, there were a few restaurants in Puerto Rico where I had to actually show my vaccination card to get really. Vaccine. Yeah. Um, that's crazy. And that's Kate and I are going to Italy in three Ooh. weeks. For our honeymoon. Ooh. In a few weeks. Yeah. In three weeks we're going and it's the same thing. If you want to go to any, uh, yeah. restaurants, if you want to go to any museums, if you want to go to any like public gatherings, you have to, they're basically doing like the full on vaccine passport. So you have to have proof of vaccination, uh, uploaded to this app that will give you like a, basically a barcode that you can scan to get in. So it's like, <laughs> it's basically like a PDF of your boarding pass will now be your, uh, vaccine passport yeah exactly okay i was wondering how they're gonna do it because it's like like judo's always talking about or not always but he's been talking with the uh, ramp up to this election he's been talking about co uh vaccine passports and stuff and i was just wondering i was like how are they gonna even let alone um enforce this how are they gonna even implement it but if i guess if everybody just gets a pdf and it's like movie tickets where they're like show this yeah so what it was and even to get into puerto rico because it's a small island nation and they like they have um they don't want to be dealing with a fucking like massive covid outbreak brought in by like shitty tourists so mm -hmm. for puerto rico you either had to upload uh proof of your vaccination um, or in my case, because my vaccine was not recognized by Puerto Rico. Because oh, I was going to ask you about the AstraZeneca. It, yeah, well, AstraZeneca was not on their list of approved vaccines. So I had to get a, uh, a COVID test, like same thing, like 72 hours prior to arrival in the country. I had to test negative for COVID. And then um, they also give the opportunity for you to take a test when you get there. And if you test negative upon arrival, then uh, then you're like exempt from fines. Uh, otherwise, if you show up in Puerto Rico without a vaccine card or a negative COVID test, they give you like a thousand dollar fine. Um, wow. And like we have to assume that um, I think a lot of sports teams this week announced that for fans to come and see them in person. I know a lot mm -hmm. of NHL teams did they're going to have to have proof of vaccination. And I think that's just going to be you upload your vaccine card to like a portal and someone checks it and verifies it. And then they give you like a little QR code to scan when you get to the arena. And that's how they will be. Uh, that's how they'll be verifying this shit. I just want to say I'm against the passport, but since we're going to, I'll, I'll still do it. I'm not going to be like, I think it's like, it's kind of just like a step too far. Because it's like the Delta variant is just chewing through the vaccines anyway. So it's like you're going to get all these people with this false sense of security where you're like, no, I've vaccined. I got my passport and I'm going to go in there and sit with all the other people who have their passport. And then you're just going to spread the Delta variant. But I'm I'm personally worried about like if I get this thing because I like I got mostly vaccinated just so people wouldn't talk to me and I could just like be unbothered. So I'll get the vaccine passport my problem is it's like when i go to a canucks game and i show my thing and they're like okay that's good that's fine but what if somebody tries to get in and they don't have their passport is it just going to be like these minimum wage suckers have to enforce it and tell these people to get out and then we're just going to have like a hundred thousand youtube videos of karen's losing their shit over the vaccine passport like the masks thing yeah, but I mean, it's already kind of been that way for like, there's just like minimum wage security staff at the arena enforcing like, oh, you can't bring alcohol or weapons in. Um, this is just going to be one more thing they have to enforce. It's just the people they're enforcing it against are a little more unruly and known for like causing a fucking scene. Um, so we'll see how it plays out. But like, I think this is just like 
the, the way the world now, like you're going to have to have proof of vaccination to do uh, basically fucking anything. Yeah. Um, so if you're still uh, a holdout and you don't want to get the vaccine for whatever your reasons are, I'm sure they're totally fucking valid. Make sure that you go on Facebook and yell about how you're being oppressed. And that will <laughs> definitely solve all of your problems. Uh, well, another thing, too, is uh, BC it was like they released this thing. They're like, oh, we're doing vaccine passports and they're going to start tomorrow, which is Monday, the 23rd. And they're like, but we'll, we'll let you know what we're doing then. But it's like so far, I think it's like we were talking about it's arenas and restaurants and non essential services and stuff. But it's like, I don't know, like I kind of feel like the whole passports thing since we're having so many breakout cases and stuff. I feel like it's just punishing people for not getting in line and doing what there's what you want them to. Like, I feel like it's it's less a preventative measure from spreading covid to more to punish the people who had the audacity to not get the vaccine. I don't even know that it's even necessary a like punishment for people to fall in line. I think for a lot of businesses, it's a like, cover your ass against liability issue. Mm. Um, you know, if you're the Vancouver Canucks, you don't want to be like, oh, we're going to open back up and let everyone in. And then you host a super spreader event at a Vancouver Canucks game. And, mm -hmm. you know, not only um, would is there the potential for like legal liability if people if a bunch of people get sick and die at a Vancouver Canucks game there's also like there's a lot of bad press that goes along with that that could have uh, a big impact on the bottom line well, yeah. of the number of people buying tickets one of the most toxic fan bases in the world online Canucks <laughs> fans you think there'd be bad press <laughs> yeah. I Maybe was gonna say I was gonna say how have they been doing the CFL Lions games but then I remembered nobody fucking goes to those so they yeah. probably didn't matter no. I think they only had they let in like 15,000 people to those which is probably more than we're gonna go anyway <laughs> they're doing like yeah they're doing like CFL games it's very easy to socially distance at because yeah. like nobody cares um but yeah so i like i understand that a lot of people are like well this feels a little like sketchy like them asking for proof of whatever to get into anything <clears throat> like on the surface yes but like if i'm a business owner and i don't want to have my name associated with like it's not even the problem isn't nobody who ha has been vaccinated is going to get sick and die from the Delta variant. Like they're, mm -hmm. they're just not, I think your chances are like 0.005% of even like being symptomatic. If you are fully vaccinated with any yeah. of the vaccines out there, uh, what the problem is, is that you can still spread it to people and the, the unvaccinated people are the ones getting sick and dying. So even though there are breakthrough cases, they're not like put you in the hospital breakthrough case. They're like, Oh, you might like develop some a people bit are of a cough or like, yeah, no, sorry. I was going to say some people are going to the hospital, but no, it's like they keep saying that pretty much everyone in the hospital doesn't have it. So it's like you could even tell these people who aren't vaccinated that the vaccine passport is to protect them because we're all spreading the Delta variant with each other because we don't give a fuck because we're not going to get sick because we're all vaccinated. So they're going to get it and it's just going to fucking flatten them, whereas us will get it and because <laughs> because uh Derek you know what I heard I heard break breakthrough covid is no worse than the flu <laughs> This one's going to get pulled off of YouTube uh, yeah, I I think it's going to get pulled off just because we brought up the talk of this stuff anyway um no what I think is the it's funny because it's kind of ironic because after all of the stuff like after um, all the like right wing crazy people were like, oh, COVID's no worse than the flu. And they like refuse to get vaccinated. Now, all of us people who are vaccinated get to live the life that they were like convincing Pretending? themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Be like, oh, it is <laughs> no worse than the flu, too. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, it's no longer. Um, I, I think their concerns are no longer like getting sick and dying. If mm -hmm. you're vaccinated, I think it's yeah. more like these businesses don't want to host people who are unvaccinated because they're actually at risk. And then the business is at risk for uh, looking very bad for yeah. allowing these people to get COVID there. So, um, 
you know, what can you do? It's a little authoritarian, but at the same time, um, yeah, I know. It's like it's like you're on the fence. It's like it is authoritarian. And if this is just a temporary thing that they pull back once it goes down, which I kind of believe in because they've been pretty good at pulling back all the other like the mask mandates and stuff. As soon as they weren't needed, they're like, all right, we'll ease off like with the reopening schedule and stuff um, where you're going to run into problems. Well, another thing, too. Sorry, I'm all over the place. What I want to say is out of character. The, <laughs> the, vaccine, the vaccine passport's not that big of a deal in BC because over 80% of people have the first dose, so like 75% have both doses. So it's like you're only dealing with 20%. Where the the problem or where the vaccine passports is going to be a big deal is in the US, where it's like they're what, like average of 50 people are vaccinated. So you're going to have half of the population not able to go to certain services that are deemed non-essential where where is that in the states like if they do the passport never they would never do that um i was even surprised they were doing it in puerto rico which is like uh, for Mm -hmm. all intents and purposes u.s territory but like no you they tried to do that in the states and i think that's like by and large why like they're leaving it up to um businesses there's nothing that's yeah. going to be overseen by the government because the second the biden administration tries to be like we're going to require uh vaccine passports for things like you saw what happened just at the prospect of the guy like assuming the presidency people stormed the fucking capital mm-hmm. <laughs> like scared a bunch of u.s lawmakers <laughs> into shitting their pants so I'm yeah. sure they know that, like, to some extent, if there is a vaccine passport program in the United States, it has to be at the private business level and not yeah. at the government level. Um, and that's the other thing here is that I think the government is like I know there is supposed to be an announcement coming tomorrow. Um, but I think like by and large, a lot of these private businesses like, you know, Vancouver Canucks or these sports teams, their ownership groups have said we're going to require this. Um, and I've seen a lot of people online being like, well, enjoy losing business and it's like i do not think that 20 percent of people uh in bc who uh drink up all the right-wing news they can find online are the people (laughs) shelling out hundreds of dollars for canucks tickets yeah that's not even people in vancouver like i would bet that the percentage of people in the greater vancouver area who are vaccinated is over 90 like i'm pretty sure that 20% is like up in the north and the interior and stuff where they currently have mask mandates <laughs> like yeah. Kelowna and which is proof all that of like the interior that like you have like exploding Delta case counts there uh, mm. and like, you know, a lot of unvaccinated people ending up in the hospital. Uh, it was just funny. Like they're one of the most uh, vocal uh, anti-vaxxers that I have been friends with on Facebook. Um, that's like a girl I've known since high school and she's been very vocal about it. And she, you know, as logic would predict, uh, a couple of weeks ago, she started talking about how awful COVID was, uh, mm. and how it was a horrible virus and how it was ruining her family and how it was really shitty. And it took her for so long to recover from. And I was like, well, you know, that's, yeah. Maybe next you could have recovered do- right away if you were double vaxxed. Yeah, maybe you would have had zero symptoms and life would have just carried on. But yeah, uh, you didn't do that. Yeah. And it's like the funny thing is like you have some of the right wing people being like, oh, we can't like for everything else. These like crazy right wing people are like the omelet where it's like you have to break a few eggs to make an omelet. And then they bring up. They're like, some people are suffering side effects from the vaccines. It's like, where the fuck's this omelet talk now? Like, so a couple people get sick. Like, I thought we were OK with that in everything else, except for this one specific scenario when you didn't want it. Yeah. Yeah. Did you hear what happened in Florida? Mm-mm. Where uh, so the governor of Florida says no mask mandates, what at whatsoever. And then two of the schools districts were like, we're going to have a mask mandate. And the governor was like, Oh, we're going to pull your fucking funding to the tune of all of the teachers salaries. If you don't get rid of this, 
Yeah, like so, it's a, it, and it's such bullshit political posturing because like yeah. normally the the right wingers are like small government, no government intervention, like let let the businesses run themselves. Uh, but then when it's something they don't agree with, they're like, oh, well, we're going to throw our weight around now and like make sure you fall in line and follow the rules, which is like totally counter to what uh, what conservative government is supposed to stand for. Uh, and I think that's just like proof of the fact that like nobody gives a fuck about governing anymore. They give a fuck yeah. about just like pandering to your base. It's, it's like people are everybody's getting whiplash from pandering. It's like, OK, I'm going to pander to this group. They're like, oh, shit, I got to pander over here and stuff. Yeah. So I got distracted by the comments. <laughs> yeah, I saw. It. Hilarious. <laughs> Uh, do you want to talk about some of our actual topics? This yeah, I, I feel like uh, COVID is a well that has been well drunk and we should talk about something else. Here, let me just pull up the list on my phone because I'm super tech savvy and I lost the page on my laptop. So um, uh, let's talk about OnlyFans getting rid of its sexually explicit. Yeah. Let's like, talk about that, about like, OnlyFans getting rid of its reason for existing. Uh, <laughs> I like okay. how, like, for the last, like, three or four months, they've been pushing really hard to be like, you know, you don't have to be a gross pervert to go on OnlyFans. There's non-sexual stuff on there. Like, um, DJ Khaled is on their fat, and he he's getting money. And then, but I think what it is, is they're looking for, which is weird because it's like you have an app like OnlyFans, which is making so much fucking money because every time a girl shows her coochie and some cis guy at home gives her money to look at it, OnlyFans takes like 20% of it. So they should have like a billion dollars, but they're still looking for funding. Like when do well, these just how apps not become business? It's like, how is your business model? make billions of dollars, but still need funding. But that's every, that's every tech company. Like funding will always be um, what you want to do is you want to take funding and take funding and take funding and take funding. And then you go public and then you're just taking your funding from the, from people buying your shares instead of taking funding mm -hmm. from private investors. But like, that's the goal. Any tech company, the, the dream is not to just like run a profitable, a profitable business with like that puts you in the green and you're earning enough money to keep this business afloat. It's you want mm -hmm. to earn enough money that you can dangle it in front of your investors and say, look at this money we're earning now value us at a hundred times of what we're actually bringing in and then give us a big fucking bag of money based on the amount of money you believe we could be making. And yeah. you just repeat that like a dozen or so times uh, until you go public. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, OnlyFans is very much like they are, uh, you know, they are the uh, the the porn starlet that's trying to go legit right now. Yeah. Um, like they are they're trying to what does it say in this article? They're trying to. Um, the changes are needed because of mounting pressure from banking partners and payment providers, according to the company, and they're trying to raise money from outside investors. Um, they are trying to position themselves more as a forum for musicians, fitness instructors, and chefs than sex workers. Do you know what I heard? The conspiracy theory is nobody no. wants to go back to work to their shitty fucking jobs after COVID. So they're getting rid of sexuality on only fans. So all these poor girls have to go get their shitty waitress jobs back. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's fucking, it's crazy that like it says the company handled more than 2 billion in sales last year. Jesus. How much of that, how much of that would you guess is for adult, adult content? 1.99999 billion. Yeah. There was like, there was some crazy super popular chef who made 20 bucks and everything else was just girls stuffing stuff in their holes. Yeah. Hi, Noah. Thanks for watching this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm keeping it PC. I never said what the holes were, but I, I think what it is, I heard someone talking about this and they were saying that they're just getting rid of the like, in, it's kind of, it's going from, triple x rated to soft core so there's not going to be like penetration videos and stuff so it's going to be like 
tasteful nudes and girls talking to guys and stuff and not being the like full on money yeah, shot is that is that what is that what the only fans want is that are you catering oh. to the only no there's already another company i can't remember what it's called but it's like it's just like only fans it was it's basically like the offshoot dirtier than only fans only fans and i can't remember what it's called but it, well, it, it already like exists suicide girls and shit like back in the day where they, you could like upload basically nude photos of yourself yeah, you can still do nude photos on OnlyFans and Suicide Girls was like boudoir and stuff. I don't know if they showed total full frontal like they showed topless. I don't know if they showed um the uh, genitals. I was trying to say think of the least offensive way to say that because I've gotten in trouble in the past for making light of a girl's hoo-ha. And sounding insensitive. You called it a clam. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I was trying not to call it. Because <laughs> that's the funniest word for it. It's like dinks and clams are the two funniest words for genitals. Matt's popping off in the comments saying showed Gucci. Yeah. He, I don't know. He made that joke already. I don't know that I like it. Yeah. He made that joke that like, like 10 it, minutes ago. Yeah, Matt. <laughs> it didn't land the first time. It didn't land the second time. Just, just keep I'm repeating sorry. it. Just keep repeating it until someone picks it up. We are not sponsored by Gucci bags, so we will not say a girl went on the internet and showed her Gucci. Bag. Are like are are do creators not already have places where they can go to show non pornographic material for like, isn't Patreon because it sounds like OnlyFans is trying to be Patreon now. Mm -hmm. That's like, basically Patreon what they're trying to do. Exists. Yeah, it's, a, it's already a thing. And it's basically like money, like banks being like, ah, we're not going to put all these through if you don't get rid of all this stuff, because I guess maybe uh, people finally found out what it's uh, what it sounds like to me is there was like, 80 year old businessmen at banks and being like, they're doing what on the internet? Yeah. And they just found out about oh, all the porn. This is an outrage. <laughs> it's like someone's daughter. <laughs> smoking a big old cigar. <laughs> it's my daughter. Yeah. Um, yeah it's, it's 60 year old daughters on OnlyFans. Because <laughs> it's not even like they weren't doing anything afoul of the like they were verifying people's ages. They weren't allowing like this wasn't like some dark website where you could find like really gross or depraved shit. It all seems yeah. like relatively on the up and up. Uh, so it just seems like a weird like, you know, Pornhub wasn't like, oh, well, we need to go G rated to appease our mm -hmm. investors. They're still making banks. Yeah. Bank singular. They're, yeah, they're not making plural banks. Yeah, they're they're only making one bank. Hey, speaking of. Oh. You know, <laughs> using technology, I was going to go uh, the pervert angle of this into a segue. Like this okay. is how long ago we've had a pot. We did a podcast like two weeks ago that one of the biggest funniest things happened and i totally forgot it happened because that's how long ago it was that's it was like do do the pervert thing and then we can do the italian thing to segue into the other italian thing wait i was gonna do the i was gonna say <laughs> if you're italian do you still do you get a loophole to put dirty stuff on only fans because you're not a pervert you're just italian perfect i love it that's good <laughs> This is so funny. Like Cuomo, he stepped down because of all the, the allegations. New York State Governor Andrew Cuomo, Mister Frodo himself. This guy or was not like Frodo. Was it Frodo? What? What did they call him? That he said it was as bad as being called the N word. Oh. It was like the guy from the uh, the Godfather. I think it was Fro <sighs> Frodo was not from the Godfather. Frodo was from Lord of the Rings. That's why I was like, wait, that wasn't it. Fredo. <laughs> so somebody called him Fredo. Remember this? Like it was like no, that a was year Chris, ago. That was Chris Cuomo. That was. His oh, brother. that was the guy from CNN. Yeah. 
Yeah. So <laughs> it's funny because his brother was like <laughs> calling me Fredo's like calling me the N word. And then his brother's like, I didn't sexually molest anybody. I'm just Italian. That's how well, Italians oh greet God. each so other. Andrew Cuomo has been dealing. OK, here's the, here's the deal. Like men in positions of authority, we are officially like balls deep in the Me Too era. Like you cannot. You could was that not the right phrase? To, <laughs> Balls to use? deep in the Me Too era. Was that not? Was that not the? Anyway, that's the perfect way to say it. That's <laughs> but, but that's like, exactly where they are. If you're an, if you're a male in a position of power, you cannot be doing any of this shit anymore. And like, so yeah. Andrew Cuomo was like called out for it, and like uh, these allegations surfaced, and then more allegations surfaced, and then more allegations surfaced. Yeah. <laughs> And then more allegations surfaced and the guy just mounted the fucking dumbest defense campaign in the Flash history of the universe. Most hilarious. It was like it was the gift that kept on. And it would be far more hilarious if he didn't have like countless victims who had suffered mm -hmm. his shit. But like the guy's just a fucking mo like hire a like reputable yeah. PR firm and let them do your talking for you. Because when you open your own idiot mouth and it was just like him, like minimizing and deflecting and everything he said, people got angrier and angrier. Uh, like what? He was like, oh, I'm just a little flirty and friendly. This Did you see the video? What? He made a video. He's like of him saying it. And then he's like, I do this to everybody. And it showed him like holding people's faces and kissing their face. And it showed Bill Clinton because he did it to Bill Clinton where he grabbed the sides of his face and like kissed him. And then it's like, yo, the one president who was on the Lolita Express, it doesn't hold as much weight. Yeah, Maybe no, get the guy not, who the wasn't guy friends with Epstein. Yeah. Like, get one of the bushes. <laughs> Literally any other kiss president him. would have yeah. been fine. Um, <laughs> fuck. But like, yeah, what was the other? Uh, what do you say? At first he was like, oh, it was. Uh. uh I guess I'm not perverted. I'm just Italian was the first one. Like he was just yeah. like, oh, it's uh, at first he was like, it's not even I'm not doing anything wrong. It's just a generational difference. And then mm -hmm. women were coming out and being like, he like reached under my shirt and like grabbed my breath and just like honked a boob. And like, that's not that's not a fucking generational or that's a, a spicy me. The it's, not a, it's not a cultural <laughs> thing. Like, it's not. There's no, you can't do that. Even in Italy, yeah. you can't do that. I'll let you know. I'm going to try in three weeks when I'm there and just like be walking <laughs> around honking boobs on the street. Uh, but uh, to my knowledge, you cannot operate that way. And you should have never been able to do that, but you definitely no. can't fucking do it now. And if you mm -mm. do do it and you get called out for it, you got to just like eat shit, remove yourself from the public eye. Uh, yeah, you can't this, minimize it. This fucking guy finally, finally resigned after, uh, you know, yeah. just like he's like, I want to step away so we can concentrate on COVID and not me molesting all these women, all these women. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and he just like he kept fucking like, honestly, I think his whole uh, strategy for this was to just kind of like turtle uh, and hope it like passed passed over and people moved on to something else. But like, if you're going to do that you just you shut your mouth and you yeah. don't say anything you just do like biden did when he got caught sniffing all those kids you just never talk about it never talk you about you pretend it. you have dementia and you make dale sentences yeah. where <laughs> they just don't make you sense from start to back yeah. yeah you don't go on the record being like oh it's a generational thing i you know the kids used to love being sniffed and now they don't. And I love being <laughs> sniffed as a kid. What's wrong with them? It's a them problem. I remember when my uncle sniffed me. There was nothing wrong with that. Not That's just what we about did. That at all. We sniffed the, the grownups would get together and sniff the kids all the time. Then the grownups would sniff each other. It was just what we did in that time. <laughs> And then he could have a video and he could have a picture or a video of him sniffing Bill Clinton. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Be like it. The one, the only president you trust, Bill yeah. Clinton. Uh, yeah. Uh, right. So Cuomo's a fucking idiot. He stepped down. Hey, speaking of uh, the biggest idiot, horny Italians. <laughs> yeah. I uh, came to light today that, uh, or not today, this week, I guess, that Catholic priests 
folks have oh been my using God. the gay hookup app grinder to hook up gaily with men. Did you just say daily or gaily? Either or, gaily and daily. <laughs> uh, my favorite thing was I was reading an article and it was being all like mature, unlike us. It was like, and they could tell from the metadata that these, um, that the info from these cell phones was being sent out from parts of Vatican City where close, close the public, to tourists. Yeah, yeah close like to tourists. So there. it's like, and then a guy from New Jersey. If there was ever a gay pastor or Catholic priest, the best place it could possibly happen is New Jersey. Cause that's 100%. where they busted a guy. It was 100%. like hundred percent the archdiocese or something like it wasn't even just a priest. It was like one of the guys in charge of the priests. And I'm going to say like, sorry, what, what were you? I'm saying? just going to say Catholic church, let your priests fuck each other. It's okay yeah. for men to have sex with men. Well, here's Quit the thing. holding these guys back. That's so for a long ass time, the Catholic church was like being gay is a sin. Absolutely mm-hmm. no gays. Uh, so all these closeted homosexual priests and like bishops and whatever else acted out by going after men who they knew would remain silent and were close to them, which in most cases ended up being boys because mm-hmm. they knew that they could act out their fantasies of, uh, you know, fucking men. Mm-hmm. I'm sure in some cases they were ped- like straight up pedophiles, but um, like in a lot of cases, um, a lot of these men were driven to prey on young boys because they didn't have outlets. So like, yeah, just let the- let them. I mean, yeah. I will say let the priests least- fuck each other and maybe they'll stop touching the kids. At least these men are engaging in consensual sex acts yes. with other consenting men. What's wrong with that? Oh, my God. I hope they're doing it wearing all those robes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they got to be. Those things are like, I mean, if you're a gay man, you have a yeah. Catholic robe fetish for sure. I mean, I'm I'm not gay, but I, every time I see the Pope dressed up in his fucking super tall hat and his clean, freshly pressed white robes tooting around on that little car, you're like, you know, I'm not gay, but I can fuck that guy. I w- 100. Yeah. I'd I would it. fuck the Pope. I w- it's yeah. not gay if it's the Pope. That's what I heard. <laughs> that's, that's what I. That's what Dad always said. <laughs> uh, hey, do you think your mom's still watching this? Yeah, she she popped on earlier, so I I know I know she's I know she's watching this. I mean, she's she left the church because of the whole scandal didn't she what was it? it was like in the midst of that uh that yeah the like the uh child sex abuse scandal and like mm-hmm. the catholic church being like being like so we have all these legal fees we got to pay for so we're just going to take up a second collection to help out with those and it's like yo you. like you you have a global billion dollar empire yeah uh in which you created a culture that allowed these people to prey on multiple young boys uh and you want us to foot the bill for that yeah dude i'm pretty sure there's a ufo in vatican city somewhere like yeah. they have so much shit there like what was it um i think the book was called american cosmic where this like uh this more conspiracy theory do we have to put a conspiracy disclaimer on this no you don't have to put it what is somebody gonna go to the vatican scour the whole part where they're not allowed to go be like dale there's no ufo there you are lying no yeah. i'm just saying it's like in the secret library at the vatican they have all this like weird shit books on like alien stuff that the um the lady who wrote American cosmic talks about. So there's like, it's not only do they have like a fucking super huge booty of treasure. They also have all these like crazy books that they could just be like, Hey, we're going to sell like make reprints of these ancient texts and sell them. So they could get, make money that way too. A Pope costume and a super huge booty. You know what I'm going to dress as is this Halloween sexy pope with yeah. assless robe you should do it like just a big old like buttless <laughs> like an assless like a baboon ass hanging out the back of your yeah pope robe. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to double check with uh 
Andrea to see if she's okay with that. Be, be the gay pope. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a good costume, gay pope. Hey, you know what else? You, If you were the gay pope, you could have your gay sidekick, Robin, joining you. Oh, hey, yeah. Um... <laughs> This is uh, so DC Comics uh, decided to um, not decided to because I was like, oh, they're making a gay character in the Batman family. Like, so if you're used if uh, if you're used to Batman comics and you don't know what the what I refer to as the Batman family. So the Batman family is Batman, Alfred, and then the five Robins, Bat mom, Bat, Bat dad, Bat dog, Bat sister, Bat um, dog. Yeah, so this is the third Robin is going to be gay, which is Tim Drake, I want to say. Fuck. Tim Drake is correct. I had to go ask my older brother about this. I was like, okay, which Robin is this? Because not only has there been five Robins, but they also rebooted the whole DC universe a while ago and then scrapped that and went back. So the way the Robins work was there's Batman and then was made in the 40s and then 10 years later they got the first robin which i think was was it dick grayson was the first robin anyways he came out in the 50s and then he quit being robin he didn't come out in the 50s he Uh, was released in the 50s so the first robin quit being robin and he became nightwing and then the second robin started in the 80s but he got murdered by the joker and then the third robin came on and that was tim drake he was the guy who but then he stopped being batman's robin and he started being red robin for a bit and he had his own spinoff but now he's kind of like but after he quit being robin and became red robin then Batwoman became at first she was a nut. she was like the fourth Robin as she was like the first female Robin and she was the fourth Robin but then she turned into the bat or the Batwoman and then the fifth uh, Robin is actually Bruce Wayne's kid with Rashid Ghoul's daughter because her and Bruce Wayne did the stuff that's on OnlyFans and then they race. And then when she had a kid, Rashid Ghoul, Batman's one of Batman's enemies, kept him in Nanda Parbat and raised him up because what they were going to do was they were going to kill Batman and then put his kid in there to be Batman and then control him and stuff. So that's the Batman family. You went hard on that. Yeah, Gay Robin, eh? Cool. I read like two Wikipedia pages. Yeah. So. And the funny thing is, it's like, oh, gay Robin, that's good. That's like a step forward. But they've already had that woman has been gay for 15 years. So it's like it was like the soft Batman character came out as a lesbian, which I don't know, for some reason, nobody really cared about. Didn't and Harley then- Quinn uh, and like Poison Ivy have a have a. Was that just in the fanfic I was reading? I think I think that was on your uh, <laughs> your, <laughs> your was that porn just a parody. Highly, highly yeah, your erotic dream I had yeah. one time. Yeah, it was uh, it was on Batman and Throbbing right <laughs> after Two Face <laughs> hooked up with Poison Ivy. It was weird. She just went straight on to Harley Quinn. <laughs> yeah. So, and the funny thing was, nobody cares. Like. Um, there was a bunch of people that like everybody was like, oh, the right wing is going to be super pissed about this, but they care more about all the trans stuff. So unless it's trans, it doesn't move the needle. Like it's like, like the Overton, was nowhere. The Overton now. window for gayness is now moving to the left. So it's mm-hmm. like uh, gayness has been totally normalized on on the right wing. I will tell you, who which did is care. awesome. Sorry, I, I'll tell you who did care. Candace Owens. Well, no, three Vatican employees uh, who are allowed into areas not accessible to tourists. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, They're like they were using Grinder <laughs> and <laughs> buying Batman comics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I don't think the right wing gives a shit about just like, uh, you know, 
regular homosexuality anymore. And it's cool that we've gotten to a point where it's like totally widespread and acceptable in all forms of mass. That's media. amazing. Like, like, yeah. Yeah, it's super fucking cool. I don't know that it's like it's like, okay, so it's like normalized now. So it's like, does that mean that comic companies like would DC maybe just like not put out a press release being like, we have an openly gay Robin now. It's progress. Because yeah. it's just like, it's normal. It's yeah, normal that's just thing. part of the character now. It's the normal thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know. It's kind of like having Robin as being the gay character. You're like, well, that was kind of a layup. You should have gone maybe maybe gone a bit bigger, like gay Superman. Yeah, that would have been good. Go go for like that would be mm-hmm. noteworthy if you take the biggest superhero. Hey, DC executives or comic writers, if you're listening to this, make a gay Superman. And then you could make the comic book Lewis and Clark. Oh, wait, that was already. Isn't Lewis and Clark like a thing? <laughs> and that's why Lois and Clark made sense because it was like a pun already. I don't know, but uh, I never even clued into that. Uh, but I one. didn't either till I just said it out loud. I was like, oh, that's why Lois and Clark was made so much sense. Hmm. I don't think I don't think I, I don't know if they factored that into it, though. Yeah. Lewis and Clark would be great. That needs to be that needs to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to talk about this soccer trade? Because I talked I talked to my older brother about the Robin thing, and then I talked to my little brother about the soccer thing. I mean, I don't want Levi explaining soccer to you to go to waste. So if you want yeah, because it took it took a bit of explaining. So Messi left uh Barcelona. Oh fuck. Is that was Barca? Yeah, he left Barca, Barca. which was in Barca. I think that's in the Spain league, right? It's, it's in the Spanish. League. Yeah. Yeah. So he left that and he went to the French league to go to Paris St. Germain because Barca over COVID went broke and couldn't afford Messi's gigantic. Did you read into this? Did you hear how much he made? How his signing contract for PSG? I'm reading right now. Oh, let me, let me, let me spoil it for you. Okay. So he got a signing bonus. Of 25 million pounds. He gets paid 25 million for the next two years. So he just signed for one year. He's one year of soccer. He's getting paid $50 million and Barker could not afford that. So Paris St. Germain is just like throwing money at this guy trying to win, I guess, establish themselves as a team. Okay. So the thing I had to ask my brother about was the different soccer leagues in Europe and how it works because we said he went from the Spain league to the French league. So the way soccer works in the state or in Europe, I think it's the UEFL, which is, I'm going to look it up. UF UEFL. Oh, UEFA. It's not FIFA. No FIFA is like international. Yeah. FIFA is like, um, a company, it would be like, yeah, I don't know. FIFA's there international. Was also that thing, there was that thing earlier this year where... Uh, oh, Super like, League. Yeah, the when the, all the teams were going to, from like the top teams from each regional league yeah. were going to defect and create their own league. Okay. Uh, and then that got shit kicked. Yeah, so I'll just, do you want me to explain the way this works? Yeah, let's, let's do that. Because you probably looked it up anyway. So for those of you out there who three days ago were like me who didn't know how the fuck soccer worked. So there's this UEFA. You can just go to UEFA.com. That is like the governing body for European soccer. So that's the big one that goes over everything. And then England has its own league. And then Germany has its own league. Spain has its own league. And France has its own league. And Spain has its own league. Those are the top five. And there's like 80 different leagues under UEFA. So they all play their season. And then whoever has the most points in those leagues wins their wins their league. They don't have playoffs or anything. But then there's this thing called the Champions League. And that is it's kind of like the all star game of all these leagues. So it's like the best teams 
from each one of these different leagues goes and plays in Champions League. And then like the next rung of people go play in the Euro League, which is like Champions League, but it's just the ones that aren't quite as good. And what got what I had uh, yeah, what I got confused about was um Premier League, which is in England, and all of these leagues, like I thought Premier I didn't know Premier League was just England when I had Levi explain it to me. So the way it works is each one of these countries that has their own league has um what's that called? Where you get dem- it's like you could be in the top league of this, like so if you're in Premier League in England, you're in the top league. But if you don't play good, like you get last place in that league, you get relocated down to the league below, and whoever wins the league below gets put up into Premier League. So Messi went from the Spanish league to the French league. So it's like everybody who was in the Spanish league, all the, all the fans and stuff who loved watching Messi, they can't watch him anymore because he's only going to be playing uh, French teams in the French league. Yeah. So that's like why if, it was like a big if deal. Connor McDavid jumped ship and went to the fucking I don't know, KHL. The, the K- Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Similar to that. Yeah. Because it would be a down. Da- it is a downgrade too to go to the French league. But it would be, yeah, it would be like if the KHL, some team was like, we're going to give Connor McDavid $25 million. And then he was just like, okay, like, which is might happen with Kaprizov. Kaprizov? 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 Yeah, the guy who just won the Calder. Yeah. Somebody offered him $10 million in the KHL. And well, they did like, that with, uh, uh, who the fuck else did that? Uh, Radulov jump ship to the KHL a while ago. Mm-hmm. Um, they got, there was another, or I can't remember who it was, but like another hotshot young Russian player who uh, who went to play there instead. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, big a big deal for soccer fans, uh, of which there are millions across the globe and zero on this podcast. So. It's the most popular sport in the world. <laughs> you could tell how much I love it because I still call it soccer. I was just pumped that there was like all these different leagues in the UEFA, so I could pick a team from each league based on their logo. So my pre- t- premier Premier League team is Arsenal because their logo is a cannon. <laughs> and it's funny because like it's not like the NHL where people kind of care what team you cheer for. Like for soccer, it's just like fucking ride or die. It's like you pick oh, yeah. a team. And that's your team for the rest of your life. And that and will be your children's team. And like, yeah, yeah. you will you go have to, to get fucking fist war. fights to defend it. You will stuff. go to war for that. While you were talking, I went and I just Googled the uh, the Champions League and they have a team called the BSC Young Boys from Switzerland. So that's my team now. What up? <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, that's a. Uh, it's a weird name. <laughs> Weird name. It's like it's like it's one of those names where it's like, yeah, we get it wasn't weird a hundred years ago. It should have been when you named because all these teams are like a hundred years old, but it's like maybe update the name. Yeah. Like this is the whole Washington Redskins thing all over again. It's yeah. like the we Vatican, know the Vatican City young boys. You think <laughs> that's a good idea? You think yeah, change the name. Like <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Uh, all right. Anything else? We're at an hour. Um, no, just let me look at the list. I think we got everything. I just wanted to make sure I talked about soccer because I made Levi explain it to me and I didn't want it to go wasted. Yeah. Thanks both Levi and Neil for, uh, for your help, uh, explaining shit to Dale so that we could have a mildly informed podcast this week. Appreciate. Oh, the last thing that everybody's been fucking bitching about since we talked about soccer we might as well talk about the other big sports thing in the nhl they're gonna sell ads on their jerseys yeah how do you feel about this derek i'm fine yeah like i don't they've been doing it in like soccer is a good example they've been selling ads based on those things for fucking years like you go into an arena or you watch a broadcast there are fucking advertisements everywhere everywhere Like, like the the sideboards, the like the light up ring shit, the the scoreboard, 
the fucking like even on the ice itself sometimes like yeah put put ads on the jerseys i don't give a fuck yeah and they're only going to be three inches by three and a half inch squares and i think they're going to be on the shoulder i don't know did they say where they were but anyways there's a lot of people being like i can't believe they're doing this but it's like as long as they don't do like in soccer where the sponsor is the main logo on the chest and they don't even have the team's logo on their jerseys as long as they don't do that i'm fine even then, replace the Canucks logo with a big old fucking like I don't know, craft dinner or uh, Walmart. Like I don't, I don't give a shit. Everyone's getting upset. Like, oh, I can't believe businesses like making money by selling advertising. <laughs> you fucking moron! Yeah, and it's like Speak- I can't believe these uh, NHL teams who have been suffering so badly for two years need some extra money. Yeah. Oh, I can't believe that the least profitable major sport in North America would want to fucking sell advertising. Yes, they will. They will do that. Yeah. I can't believe a sport that makes less viewership than poker needs to sell advertising. (laughs) Mm. Let them let them sell advertising. I was going to ask you, which sponsorship would you like to see on your team the most on the Canucks? Uh, Yeah. Huh, that is a good question. I mean, I'm like looking around at my uh fucking house right now for like what what's a brand I really like? Mhm. I don't know. It'll almost like definitely be like tech companies. Yeah, it's It'll either going like, to be like Shaw, oh. Bell, Rogers, yeah. Scotiabank, I think Shaw is the major one for the Whitecaps, aren't they? There's like Shaw, or no, it's Bell. Bell yeah, has uh, it's still Bell all over the Whitecaps. Who did didn't Bell do the Canucks? Because they had stuff on their helmets this year, which was weird because it's backwards. Like I figure you would have gone on the jersey before the helmets because it was way more visible on the helmets and more distracting. I would say. Yeah. Was Bell on the side of the Canucks helmets this year? I don't, I don't remember seeing ad, but it just goes to show you that, like, for the most part, I think we're mostly blind to advertising anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. like, I don't know how many people are really going to notice, mm-hmm. like, a, a patch on the jerseys. But I don't know. What's a fucking what's a cool company I would love to see? Like a cool local company. Uh, Japa Dog. Know. Yeah, sure. Japa Dog or Lu- uh... Lululemon, Aritzia. <laughs> uh, uh, uh What's that? They make really expensive like sweatshirts and shit, like a hundred and bench fucking fifty dollars. No, they're like uh, rain, raining champ. Raining Car- champ would be Carhart- good. Carhartts. Uh, Dude, the are- best would be if Trump put his on something and everybody would lose their shit. <laughs> I don't think many Trump fans are watching. Yeah. Uh, watching hockey. Though. I, I don't know. I kind of want it to be NASCAR. not just the fucking media ones like i wouldn't mind seeing like a spotify like one of the maybe an app that has like a little nondescript logo like a spotify ad would be cool because it would just be like the green circle with the lines it'll for real it is going to be like the telco company so like i think you nailed it it's like there will be bell for montreal and there will be fucking shaw for vancouver and there will be rogers for toronto and there will be like they're the they're the businesses with the fucking money to throw around. They already have all the arenas named after them. Like, why not get your logo right on the sports teams as well? Actually, I could see, we could see like Honda or Kraft because they do a lot of sponsorship with the NHL. Like, because obviously they're going to give the major advertising partners who are already in, involved, give them first crack at it. So maybe we'll see a Honda H or a little. Oh, man. The Oilers with the KD on it because they're already orange. That'd be pretty sweet. There you go. Yeah, Synergy. I'd be okay with that. Hey, NHL mm-hmm. teams, if you would like Dale and I to pair you up with attractive advertisers who match your color scheme, feel free to shoot us an email at uh, what the fuck's our email? Outrage Outrage Fact Pod at Outrage gmail.com. Fact pod at gmail.com. And advertisers. Here's, here's another like, free one French is mustard for Nashville. <laughs> killing it. Killing it. I don't think yeah. they have. I think French's is a Canadian brand, though. I don't think they have it in the States. I'm sure if you throw money at something or find the Heinz, would whoever makes they mustard got, got in the States, mustard. they got Heinz whoever mustard. makes mustard down there because yeah. Nashville is mustardy. 
Hans Muster. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning into this episode of Outreach Factory, the podcast where we look at the things that made people mad online this week and explain why they're deprecating. I've been your co-host, Derek Bolin. You can go and look at my former tweets on Twitter, at Herder, but fuck Twitter and fuck all the people on there. And if you're still visiting that health site on a regular basis, log off and it will make your life much better. Over to uh, you, If you don't want to go to Derek's super problematic Twitter handle, you could go see the uh, Outrage <laughs> Fact Pod Twitter handle or my Twitter handle, which is at SuperDaleBot. If you don't get enough of my bad taste jokes on here, you could get some there. And how uh, could you ever have enough? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we have a Instagram, which is just Outrage Factory. You could go see clips of the videos if you want. If you're like, if you just found us and you're like, hey, I should go back and watch some of the episodes. They're like one to three minute clips. They were one minute because that's all TikTok was. And then they went up to three minutes. So some are a bit longer. You could go back and see like a little taste from every episode. We're also on TikTok. It's just my name, Dale DeRuder, because I didn't want to set up a second TikTok. And uh, the brand is strong with this one. Yes. Uh, we have Redbubble merch. If you uh, want to go buy some stuff, that link is always in the show notes. So if you're listening to this, just go look on. I don't know if it would make it on to like just go to outragefactory.com and you could see the notes in the episode because I, I know the episodes automatically go to like Spotify and Apple and all that stuff. But I don't know if the long form episode description gets carried with it or not that sounds like smart people stuff which is above my pay grade yeah it is it's true we just upload the <gasps> my bubble my bubble tea's here Ooh, my, bubble wife, tea. my wife brought me a bubble tea nice yeah she uh, beats sorry that she, beats a fan she, she wins it does it does beat the fan <laughs> uh hey everyone if you like this podcast please rate review subscribe wherever you get your podcast if you really like this podcast uh, go check out go, our only fans go check it <laughs> yeah where dale and i are doing butt to butt stuff but only for one more week uh, or whenever they make the policy changes when is that happening uh i think in a month okay yeah you're like you don't have the exact date memorized. <laughs> You're like, I'm better to download all my favorite content. Before yeah, I then. have my old laptop just downloading videos off of OnlyFans before they all go away. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, cool. And until next week, stay angry.